Chiefs, what would good morning, sir? How are you from the city of Martinsburg? Good morning, Rob. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you, sirs? Excellent. Did they keep you hopping this weekend with the St. Patrick's crowd? It was a great time. It absolutely was. I, I brought some pictures of uh, the festivities and all. Uh, Robbie Blair, Main Street, Martinsburg, did a tremendous job with that. The mayor, uh, oh my gosh, uh, Kevin knows. He was down there having a great time interacting with our officers in the crowd. Uh, talking to Rob and my uh, lieutenant, Lieutenant Darby, uh, for putting our police down there with it. I believe we had about 20 officers uh, mm-hmm. participating. And we were talking on the way in, uh, saying they were participating. I got them with lightsabers playing around <laughs> and stuff. And showing that we're a part of this community and enjoying it as much as everyone else. Yeah. George, they were they were really participating. I mean, they were there. They were hanging out with people. They were they were just having. I mean, they were there, so we knew we were safe. But they were there just being a part of the community and having fun and enjoying it as much as everybody else was. Absolutely, my deputy chief Aaron Gibbons, his wife Teresa, were there uh, handing out stuff for Main Street Martinsburg and things, and just doing a host of things. I was there. I stopped down for things, greeted and talked to some people, talked to my guys and gals as well. But uh, what a great. What a great festival. What a great thing. The mayor uh, put out so much good stuff with this when he uh, asked for this to be done. And also, kudos to Kevin Knowles. I greatly appreciated it. It was a long day because right on top of that, my men and women had to also do the Tough Band Contest right. same night. So it's a long day. So to, uh, to my entire force that participated in it, thank you. I, I know it was a long day, but I, I thank each and every one of them for coming out. You know, it's on a weekend. Some of them, they're, they're working, but they're working over as well. But some of them, it's not. Their, it's their days off. Sure. So they come in, they sacrifice that. They're compensated for it. By all means, the city's always been good to us. But it's keeping the entire community safe. And we're going to be doing it as long as, you know, as, long as I'm chief for uh, any amount of time. But I think it's a great festivity and everybody's. They said probably about 15,000 people mm-hmm. during the duration of the event were there. And when I was there, the crowd was pretty strong and as it started warming up a little bit it got even larger i mean i i tell you i in my business i travel a lot i go all over the place and there is no place that i feel safer than i do in martinsburg and i'll tell you that man oh my lord I mean, uh, thank you no place uh, there's no there's no time in martinsburg if i'm walking around anything that I don't feel safe. You guys do a heck of a job, man. Oh, you pre- still live. You live next door to George, correct? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just drop the, uh, drop the that help. Drop the but, but that's such kind words, and it speaks such volume for our department, our men and women that are out there every day, twenty four seven. We never sleep. Uh, you know, we're not only the only governmental agency that'll pick up the phone on Christmas Day. We'll send a cow over to your house if need be, too. So. We are part of this community, and I appreciate the kind words so much, and I want that feeling to personify all over this community. We're all in this together. This is our town. I mean, this is where I grew up. This is our town. And I, I, without getting on a soapbox, you know that. I mean, that's how I feel about it. I went to public schools here. I had a great time growing up, love this town, love this community, but words like that mean a great deal to me. Thank you. Speaking of soapbox, the city police also provide security for the Soapbox Derby. That's in Martinsburg as well. (laughs) Uh, We do. That's coming up as well, too. I know how to transition, baby. (laughs) Matt Miller. Uh, Mayor Knowles earlier was talking about um, still a lack of some officers on the force right now. Where are you in that, and, and what can you do to try to get the numbers where you'd like them to be? We are always hiring. Mm-hmm. Uh, we truly are. Uh, unfortunately, uh, when I took this as chief of police, we were 12 officers down. We got it up till about, uh, I'd say it was about six or seven down and you know making increases. Then almost up to four down. We're currently now at nine down, and we have people leaving. We've had some uh, officers, uh, good officers. I know one went with state police, and uh, some went to the sheriff's department too. That we really, you know, we really miss. We really liked, and uh, two other things: retirements coming up uh, with some of our officers coming up, and so we lost some people, some really good qualified people. And we're always hiring. Uh, we're going out doing recruitment as much as we can. We have a new HR director. Uh, Steve does a tremendous job. He's been helping us with this as well. Advertising, going to recruitment places, going to uh, military bases also when they have a job fair to get young guys and girls uh, that are coming out of the military are still early age, but they're looking at a law enforcement career to push that out as well. So we're doing a lot. We had a billboard sign up uh, on the north end where old DMV used to be as well that got a lot of attention. 
So we're trying very much to recruit, and we're going into schools. And I'm talking always to the school board. I'm always talking to teachers uh, in all these schools to tell them, hey, the city of Martinsburg pays very well for law enforcement. They truly do. This is the highest I've seen our wages ever. What are you and starting them at now, George? I think it's, what, 52-1, mm-hmm. uh, which is mm-hmm. very good. But there's now incentives. Uh, Steve worked with us to get us. And, you know, the council and the city manager and uh, Mark Speckler, I can't say enough good things about them. They're family to me. And they were able uh, to put together a package that had good benefits. The city's got the best benefits that I've seen. Uh, the city's always had the most liberal and best leave policy I've seen. You can accumulate so much leave time. So there's a lot of good things to do. And a step program now we're going into for the pay of law enforcement because they fully realize how important trained, qualified law enforcement officers are and how hard it is to recruit and retain. Because once they have West Virginia certification, they're marketed. People look for them. Other departments look for them to try to get it because the turnaround time is so quick. And, and that's what we try to do as well. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not above that either. If I can you know, get somebody from another department that's qualified and great, you betcha I'm going to bring them on. So those are some of the things that we're doing. That's some of the things that the city's doing. I have one officer, uh, Officer Raul. He's down at the uh, State Police Academy right now. He should be coming up on uh, graduation here in the next several weeks. And uh, we're going to have the test again. We just went through a test. Uh, We're looking at some applicants that came from it. And we'll give the test again. But please, if you want to start a job, if you want to start a profession, (laughs) this is where you start. Martinsburg Police Department, second to none. Start with our department. Get involved. Get involved in our town and community. I know you'll fall in love with it as much as I have uh, 37 years ago on April 15th. This is where I am. This is what I want to do. The um, and I, you're kind of a mind reader here, sir, <laughs> because you brought in this paper about the uh, the task force and the Martinsburg Police Department search warrant at the vape store. I'd actually asked the mayor about that a couple of segments ago. We are um, we are looking at at that uh, very carefully. I mean, I I know as a resident of Martinsburg, 27 years, I love it here. When I come under the underpass and the first thing mm-hmm. I see coming into downtown is that on the left. I don't find it that exciting. I got, I got to say that. And I know it, it's it's a private business. Anybody can be anywhere, and it's it's great. Um, what is going on with that? And, well, I can speak somewhat. To, it's still an investigation in process. And first of all, uh, let me put a shout out for the officers of the Eastern Panhandle Drug and Violent Crime Task Force. There is not a better group or a more articulate and astute group in law enforcement professionals that I've ever had the pleasure of dealing with care for them as much as I care for my own my own department. And we have two officers assigned to that are exceptional. We came to them with a problem. Hey, when this started, the things that we were getting is we were getting calls and cad sheets, which means a call for service or somebody wanting to give us information in regards to that vape shop. And I'd say there was, I don't I know, I can, I can think of three right off my head, but I know there was probably about five or more. And then people on the street saying it where it was alleged that they were selling nicotine products and THC products to minors. That's how this all came about, because of the sales to minors. That's what we were looking at. And then as we looked into it a little more, and the task force uh, spearheaded it, and we accompanied them and all, there was enough probable cause to obtain a search warrant for for that establishment. And what we found, uh, what they found actually, and I got this somewhere, and I was trying to see what I did with my read. Ah, oh, there they went. My reading glasses went on the floor. But one of the products they took, we took several things. We they took several things: seven hundred and seventy-five vapes, twenty pre-roll products, two hundred and forty-five edible edible products, and thirty-two leaf products. Now, each one of those products had, and if if I can, if you don't mind, if I read mm-hmm. this, this is one of them. This is an actual evidence photograph. This this is the strawberry puffs. Some of the edibles, uh, basically like gummies. Mm -hmm. And it says right on the package from California, government warning, this product contains cannabis, a Schedule I controlled substance. That's what it states it as. So that made it kind of easy to, uh, you know, figure out what that was. (laughs) Exactly. And uh, it says uh, keep out of reach of children Mm -hmm. and animals. Cannabis products may only be possessed or consumed by persons 21 years of age or older out of California. That's on every product we took. 
that they took that the tasks were seized as evidence. In detective work, that's known as a real big clue. <laughs> that's known as a real big clue. We'll call that a clue. Even a, even a layman could figure that one out. And George, to tell you what, hold on on that description because I know Matt Miller has to get going uh, to an important event here, and um, I don't want to make him late for that. Absolutely not. The chief of police in the city of Martinsburg, George Swartwood, also Jonathan Bodwells. We were going over some of the evidence from the vape shop bust that the MPD was involved in George. Go ahead and continue as we uh, come out of the commercial break here. Absolutely. It was always good seeing Matt, even if that was brief and I heard somebody say, we're going to dock you, but see you. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I care for him very much. And, and I'm just going into some of those things. Uh, everything, I and I've checked with the uh, prosecuting attorney on knowing that it's an open investigation and I, I got to word things a little carefully sure. and things, but, uh, and you know, I think the world of Katie, she, she means the world to me. So they're going on with this investigation, but some of the things that they saw and that they took, that's what's known as a real big clue when it's right on the package itself. And speaking with one of the investigators from the task force and then doing a little research of it. And it leads into a part, like you said, of a story that those, choose those uh, little gummies that i was telling you about there's 10 to a pack and i pulled it up online and he he clued me into this too each gummy contains a hundred milligrams of thc that's a lot that that's that's to somebody who's never tried or used that that's a lot of thc and the way that the investigator from task force uh, correlated that to me is that most medical marijuana that he has seen is between 5 and 30 milligrams. So 100 milligrams each gummy is a lot. And some of the other things that I was dealing with when we looked at this is that earlier uh, in the month, we had a 14-year-old, and I'm not going to mention the school, and I'm not going to mention the juvenile, but we had a 14-year-old OD at the school. And the investigation showing, and this is not related to that vape shop, uh, it does partake with another, but it has nothing to do with the vape shop that we hit. But he OD'd at the school. And what had happened is that an 18-year-old had, the investigation alleges, an 18-year-old uh, had purchased or had obtained these gummies, knowing that it had THC in it, and gave it to a younger sibling who was 14, who passed it out at the school to other kids. That child, I, I don't know if they've ever experienced marijuana before, but that child OD. They had to be taken by ambulance. They had to be taken to the hospital to be uh, uh, back. Now, I don't want to say revived, but to uh, basically be treated and stuff at the hospital. So that's what we were looking at. That's why that place, as far as Martinsburg Police Department is, became something out of the norm that we do. We go after hard drugs. We go after fentanyl. We go after crack. We go after heroin. I'm going to tell you about a new drug you're going to see here that scares me. Xylazine. Just heard about this on the news yesterday. Xylazine. Tell us what that is. And uh, Well, what it is is a real strong animal uh, veterinarian sedative for large animals. And it causes eruptions in skin when it's injected. It's becoming more and more popular to put it in with fentanyl as well. And if you've ever seen the addiction to that drug, it is catastrophic. Can I stand up? Y'all mind if I stand up real quick just to give you some idea? Yeah, we, we, we might not be able to catch you on camera, but well, I think, I'll try to well, adjust. What, you, what we have seen is people that are addicted to, this is how they stand. Wow. For hours. For hours upon hours. Just bent over. For hours. Completely bent over or bent backwards or bent backwards from it because it relaxes everything and they simply bend over. They're in a state. And I'm not by any means uh, talking about the fair state of Pennsylvania. But if you ever jump on YouTube, look, pull up Kensington Avenue, Philadelphia, Streetwalk, Kensington Avenue, Philadelphia, and look at it. That's zombie land. Mm -hmm. I don't know how else to describe it. It's zombie land. And addicted persons of that drug line that street, and they're all bent over in half. Uh, our task force, speaking to them, it's here. It's here. And uh, I know that they're working investigations involving it. And I also know that I've seen who I believe uh, was suffering from that and addicted to that drug right here in Martinsburg. I've seen one of the 
one of the uh, one of the persons that were addicted to it bent over exactly like that. Jeez. So take a look at it. Uh, it's scary. It really is. Hopefully, it never takes hold, never comes here. But xylazine, it's called Zylazine. crank. It's called Frankenstein. It's called deep sleep. It's called zombie drug on the street. It's got several names. And uh, when did it first appear here, George? When I saw it, it was probably several weeks back that I saw someone suffering from that. But talking to the task force, it sounded like it's recent here. And it, uh, sometimes they'll say that it's heroin or they'll say that it's fentanyl when dealing, when it's really not, or it's a combination of all of them. Now, and, is this cartel-infused and backed? Is no, it uh, imported no, no. from China? Absolutely. Are we making it in bathtubs here or what? Absolutely. No, this is all imported, though. I mean, this is all imported, high, you know, high money, high everything that's coming. It's low to buy, low money to buy, but it's all cartel-related drugs. Everything is. Does it have the same sort, of, same sort of overdose rate? that uh fentanyl does same sort of death rate my study what i've looked into when i've looked on it on uh line they talk about fentanyl's a killer i mean it's just a flat killer mixing it with this makes it even more of a killer makes it even more worse Jeez. and that's how it's coming it's coming laced in fentanyl or by itself and being described as fentanyl or heroin hey i gotta ask one quick sure. question i was reading over the report you gave us um the task force report and it showed on the the money that they got there was there was twenty three thousand four hundred seventy eight dollars in cash, and nineteen thousand seven hundred and twenty nine dollars in coin. Who uses coins? Uh, where, where did the coin come from? That kind of stunned me as well. I, I got to tell you the truth. Yeah, I, I upgraded the uh, totals. Uh, speaking in with a member of the task force, they said, "Hey, let us give you the final total. What we're looking at," and there was twenty three thousand four hundred seventy eight dollars cash you know, currency, uh, folding money, and $19,729 in assorted change. How much does that weigh? A bunch. <laughs> a bunch. When, when we put it in one, one of the pickup trucks that we were using, you could actually see the truck squat down. Sure. Uh, because that's a lot of weight, and I've never seen that. I've never seen that much change any place other than a bank. Sure. But I've never seen that much change at any place that was hit. And, you know, you saw some of the pictures that we put on Facebook. The money was in, you know, trash, not trash bags, but plastic baggies secreted in the place. How, how long does it take to count that much change? It, I think it, I think somebody told me it took almost like uh, four or five hours for the machines at the bank to calculate and run through the, cho- the coin machine. I, I guarantee we burned one of them up. Sure. I guarantee we burned one of them up. But that's the most change that I've seen. So that's some pretty significant money. You have to realize, in my humble opinion, that if you got $43,207, including the change, on hand midweek. As a small business. At a small business on Main Street Martinsburg or on Queen Street Martinsburg, that's pretty good. That's a lot of money. What's that's the status of that money. business today, George? Uh, right now, I know that the building inspectors have been assisting us in looking at that because we also found an apartment that had several beds in the back that were built in. Uh, I don't know what that was used for. I would speculate uh, possibly for workers that are that are coming there to stay there. But it's not it's not zoned. It's not a residential building. It is a retail store. So I know they're looking at it. I know that I've discussed this. I've reached out uh, to several city council persons. I've reached out uh, to the prosecuting attorney, Mr. Ken Sayer, and uh, I'm gonna, I've reached out to the mayor as well to take some action as well uh, regarding business license, state business license, city business license. And I've also reached out to the owner of the building itself because it's a rental. And I expressed where I'm going with it. Uh, where I believe the city wants to go with it. And I, I did get support from him, uh, very much so. And he spoke to the uh, owner of the business as well. At least he was going to. George, thank you for the work you and your officers do in the city of Martinsburg. Great to have you visit with us. Please come back again soon. Sir. Oh, you guys are always so gracious to me and so good to me. I, I can't say enough good things. But we got a lot of good things coming up. The home show, as you know, is coming up. We just had a great St. Paddy's Day. Kudos, Mayor. You did a great job. I know the other one's coming up as well. But... That's how that took off. Thank you. As with kids. Thank Appreciate you. you sharing that information.